If you're learning Arabic or wanting to learn Arabic, I'm sure you're wondering which variety of Arabic you should learn. If you didn't know already, Arabic is a little complicated in that the Arabic used for reading and writing is generally modern standard Arabic, whereas the Arabic used for speaking is generally an Arabic dialect. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five reasons as to why I think you should start off learning an Arabic dialect first. Number one, if you start off learning a dialect, you'll be able to speak with native speakers literally immediately because you are learning the variety of Arabic that is used in everyday conversations and in everyday life. People generally use the Arabic dialect in their region to communicate with their friends and family. So if you're starting off with the dialect, you can quite immediately have beginner and intermediate conversations quite easily with native speakers. Now you can still communicate with native speakers if you're learning modern standard Arabic. A lot of native speakers do learn MSA for either religious reasons or just because it's a subject at school. But I also do know, at least in the context of Egypt, that not everyone is super fluent in it because it is definitely a very hard variety of Arabic to learn. And so a lot of native speakers even struggle with modern standard Arabic themselves. So if you were to speak modern standard Arabic, there is a potential chance that someone might not be able to understand you or maybe they will understand you but you might not be able to understand them when they speak back because you know everyone has varying levels of MSA knowledge so yeah just be aware of that now when you're learning an Arabic dialect you're learning the dialect of a certain region or a certain country so generally you'll be able to communicate quite well in that area I will say that not all all Arabic dialects are mutually intelligible, meaning that not everyone can understand each other. But overall, if you learn kind of the more common big dialects like Egyptian Arabic, Levantine Arabic, maybe Khaliji, for example, a lot of native Arabic speakers will be able to understand these. Like I said earlier, Arabic is a little complicated, but don't worry because learning Arabic is literally amazing and you should still do it. Number two, which I think is a really big deal when it comes to learning Arabic, is that you will have access to a lot of natural content online that is made for native speakers if you do decide to learn a dialect first. Again, most people use the Arabic dialect to communicate about everyday things. They're texting their friends in the dialect, but not only that, the Arabic dialect is usually also used in music, movies, series, uh, social media, etc, etc. So if you're learning the Arabic dialect, you're going to have a well of content that you can look to that is created for native Arabic speakers. And you'll be able to have access to a lot of that because, you know, you're learning it. Now I will say there definitely are resources for MSA, but again, MSA is more so used for reading and writing and for speaking, it's used for kind of more like not everyday topics. It's used in the news. So definitely if you watch the news, most of that stuff will most likely be in MSA. So you do have a lot of content available for MSA as well, but in terms of like movies and music and following influencers and keeping up with memes on social media, there's a very high chance that most of that is going to be done in the dialect. Number three is that grammatically, I think that learning a dialect might be easier than learning MSA. So it will not be as daunting as a task. I've taken maybe five lessons for MSA. I honestly, I haven't learned much MSA yet, but even in those first five lessons, there were so many rules and everything. I was like, whoa. So I do believe it might kind of be a nicer transition into learning Arabic. And if you do decide to learn MSA in the future, definitely it will be easier for you to learn because you already have a grasp of an Arabic dialect and MSA and the dialects do have a lot of similarities with each other, but at the same time, they have a lot of differences. But for example, for me, I have been learning Egyptian Arabic for around four-ish years now. And because of that, I do understand some MSA when I hear it, you know, like in a video, I can't understand some parts because they are very similar to one another. You can kind of use the dialect as a stepping stone to learning MSA or modern standard Arabic. And then you'll have learned like both and you'll really have more of a mastery of the Arabic language. Because I do think now after four years, four and a half years of learning Arabic, I'm realizing more and more, okay, if I really want to be able to speak Arabic well, like yes, I have to speak the dialect well, but I also have to know MSA. So even me, I'm thinking of starting to learn MSA this year or next year, just because I understand the value of it and that like, you know, 
If you want to learn Arabic, you should also learn MSA. However, I really do think learning a dialect can be advantageous depending on your reasoning. But for me, I wanted to learn Arabic to communicate. So in that sense, learning a dialect was the best option. And also personally, I have a very big interest in Egypt and Egyptian culture. So it made sense for me to learn the Egyptian dialect, but also at the same time, it's very useful because Cairo is a huge powerhouse in the MENA region when it comes to movies, music. A lot of things are coming out of Egypt. Egypt and a lot of other Arabic speakers are consuming this content so therefore a lot of people understand the Egyptian dialect even if they are not Egyptian themselves or they've never stepped foot in Egypt they will most likely have an understanding of the Egyptian dialect because of how widespread and how popular it is so on to our fourth reason it will make traveling to an Arabic speaking country easier if you are learning the dialect of that country. So again, using Egypt as an example, if you're going to travel to Egypt or if you're going to move to Egypt, for example, it is very important to know the Egyptian dialect because that's what you're going to need to use in Ubers and taxis, at the grocery store, to communicate with anyone and everyone you're gonna have to be using the Egyptian dialect. Probably yes, if you know MSA, depending on who you're talking to, yeah, probably. Of course, there are people who speak other languages, like not just Arabic in these countries. There's a lot of people that will speak English or maybe they'll speak different languages. But again, it's always nice to know a few words or know some of the language of like a country that you're going to travel to. It's just nice. So last year I studied abroad in Egypt to finish my master's degree. And I was there for almost a year. And I do think my experience was like elevated in a positive way because I knew Arabic. Not fluently, I make a lot of mistakes, but because I knew the Egyptian dialect, I was able to communicate a lot. It helped, you know, with making friends and just getting around. I think the experience wasn't as overwhelming for me because I had already spent like a few years prior learning the dialect. So I already knew that I would be able to speak to most people when I was there and they would most likely be able to understand me and kaza kaza. And the fifth and last reason is that you might be able to have a better connection to the culture of the area that you're learning more quickly and again being able to connect with people more easily. I've heard stories or read stories online of people who have studied MSA for like a few years and then they travel to an Arabic speaking country and they try to speak MSA on the street and like with people and literally people would I think laugh in their face or would just be confused because they wouldn't be able to understand or maybe they did understand but something I learned is that a lot of cartoons apparently are in MSA in modern standard Arabic so people I think have told me that if someone were to speak MSA to them they're like speaking to them as if they were a cartoon character because cartoons were made in MSA versus dialect like not all of them obviously I know Bakar is like a pretty popular cartoon and I'm pretty sure that was in the Egyptian dialect but just like know that and I think something that's really important to know is that language and culture are really intertwined with one another so if you know the language of the area that you're going to travel to or move to or whatever you want it's just going to unlock a deeper level of understanding of life there and of the culture because again everything is intertwined and of course you know there are certain phrases that people will say and like they're culturally related and they have cultural nuances to them just like in any language or in any dialect so you can do that with MSA like MSA is kind of the standardized Arabic and most people learn modern standard Arabic but again not everyone will be like fluent and a lot of native speakers do struggle with it but again it is like a good kind of breadth of knowledge Arabic to have if you need to communicate but of course if you're more interested in like Arabic literature for example then yeah go with MSA but if you're more interested to speak and communicate with people go with the dialect first is what I personally would recommend I mean I think learning a language it's really worthwhile and it's really rewarding when you're able to talk to someone and they can understand like they can actually understand what you're saying it's like wow like you can understand me what is going on so I feel like if you were to learn a dialect first, that would more likely happen at a faster rate than if you were to learn MSA. Like, yeah, people will understand you, but I'm sure probably someone's gonna tell you like, hey, by the way, we don't really speak like that, but 
you're doing great. Like, uh, I think a lot of people would still encourage you, but I think people would also let you know. Yeah, we actually don't speak like that. We don't use those words because the thing is with MSA and a di like dialects, they're different. Like they, they are all Arabic, but the grammar is different. Literally the words used, the vocabulary themselves is different. Sometimes, yes, it's just the pronunciation of a word or something. So just be aware of that. You know, I personally am very happy that I chose to learn Egyptian Arabic first and not MSA because I've been able to use it so much. And like, as you see, I have a YouTube channel now and I make videos in Arabic. I was able to do really cool stuff in Egypt. Fun fact, I was on a really popular show in Egypt, you know, because I could speak some Arabic. Like I was struggling for sure, but I made a lot of friends in Egypt. I was able to get around, acclimate myself more to life there because I knew the language. So in summary, do your research when you're learning Arabic because I know Arabic is a bit tougher to navigate because it's a bit more complicated because again, you have this diglossia and that there are different forms of Arabic used for different things. And if this is all kind of confusing to you and you're like, what? There's a different variety for this and for that. You should watch this video about which Arabic variety you should learn and learn more about it. Bye.